everybody, I'm Sarah and I'm a recorder player. This video is all about arranging music for recorders, both solo and ensemble. What do you need for a really good result and what should you watch out for? First point, what kind of music is possible actually? So what works well on recorders? They are virtuosic melody instruments that can produce very beautiful, agile, melodic lines. They have a very pure sound. If there's something with beautiful harmonies, this can be like, ah. They speak really well with articulation and rhythm. I would love to say, in theory, you can arrange any piece to be played on the recorder, but the truth is some are gonna work better than others. I would say what works the best is vocal music. The range of the human voice is very similar to that of the recorder and there's a lot of other similarities, the phrasing and the way you breathe. Here we run into the problem that the melody of a song, which can be very beautiful when expressed with a very meaningful text, can be really boring on one melody instrument. So you're going to want to choose a song that has interesting harmonies, it might have a recognisable motif that you can bring out, uh, you could even write your own solos on top. Most Baroque pieces are going to work on the recorder as well. Uh, think of sonatas for the violin or the gamba or the traverso flute. They might need some adjustment in terms of range and other techniques. I'll get to that later, but the musical language will fit. Then we get to things that start to be a bit tricky. Piano music, because there are just so many notes at the same time. How do you get all those on the recorder? Orchestral music, the same story, but you have all of those sound colours and textures. There's so much to say on this point, but I'll let you ponder that. Move on to the next. Number two, which recorder should you choose for your arrangement? An obvious starting point is the range. How high and low does it go? This can be the basis for choosing a recorder, especially if you're playing with a piano or harpsichord, for example, and you need to fit with them. However, the other really important thing is the tone colour. Something will sound completely different on a low contrabass than a high twiddly sopranino. And even the same notes are going to give a different effect in different registers of the instrument. You are also free to transpose. Why not? The middle area of the recorder from around is its golden spot. So you might want to transpose to bring your music into that register also to put it in a nicer key. The forked sharp and flat fingerings sound less strong than the natural open fingerings. So for this reason you might want to transpose your piece into a key that has less sharps and flats. This brings me to point three, the range. What if it doesn't fit? it goes way too low, it goes way too high. One option is to swap instruments throughout the piece. You start off on your sopranino, then you go to the contrabass, and then you go to a tenor. Uh, pro, so you hit all of those notes, you've got some nice different sound colours. Cons, you've got a lot of different sound colours, and it can look messy on stage, can be a bit of a pain for the player. So to keep it on one instrument, we're going to be octavating sections moving passages up or down an octave, but not willy-nilly. You want the result to be coherent. So try and look for whole phrases that you can move up and down. Check that it's not gonna mess with the voice leading, that you don't suddenly get these weird jumps. Of course, if it's just one note in a whole long phrase, you don't have to move the whole passage just for that note. Try and replace it with another note in the harmony. If it makes sense, you could move that note up an octave. Try and look at the overall context and make something that makes musical sense. Notation. How to notate for recorders. This seems to be an endlessly confusing subject for a lot of composers, but it's quite simple. Here's the confusing thing. Although we have recorders in C, F, G, D, B flat, all kinds of other keys, they are all notated in the sounding key. Don't worry, the maths and transposition happens in our heads 
Just notate the pitches you want and we will play them with different fingerings. The instruments down to the tenor are notated in treble clef, the set and below in bass clef. What I did not manage to say coherently was that some sizes of recorder sound an octave higher than notated. This can be confusing, so... I'm actually just going to put a handy diagram here. Produced by instrumentalways.com. Number five, instrumentation within your ensemble. A very standard setup is soprano, alto, tenor, bass. This works especially well if you're adapting vocal music. If you're looking for a bigger ensemble sound, it works better to have more instruments at the bottom than at the top. Your high soprano, sopranino, even garkai are gonna cut through no matter what. You can have a whole orchestra of contrabasses and one sopranino would fly out above the rest. However, if you're arranging for a specific group, do check their availability. It sounds better to have lots of big instruments, but the practical fact is that most people play higher instruments. So try and balance what you want to sound with the instruments that your people actually play. Something that works really nice if it's available to you is doubling the instruments in octaves. This works brilliantly with Renaissance music. So the top line is doubled with a soprano and a tenor, second line alto and bassette, third line tenor and rate bass, fourth line bassette and contrabass. <sighs> Number six, if you're interpreting non-homogenous music, that's instruments that aren't the same, like an orchestral piece or a band, you're going to need to create extra contrast. In an orchestra, you have all of those different instruments and they have really different sounds, tone colours. If you're putting that into a recorder orchestra or ensemble, they have much more of a similar sound. It could end up sounding muddy or samey. You can do this with instrumentation. Not everyone has to play at the same time. A small section with just the high instruments or just the low instruments. In a similar way, we come to the question of dynamics. I'll say it, the recorder just does not have the same dynamic scope as a piano or a saxophone or an orchestra. We're going to have to suggest these dynamics in other ways. How to do this? Instrumentation. Have more instruments playing in a loud section go down to a solo or a duo for a soft section. Recorders sound much louder in the high registers, so if you want to give it some power, bring in the sopraninos, get people to play an octave higher, high, high, high. You can also be really detailed with the lengths of notes. Use legato to create more sound, staccato, separated notes to make it softer and more sparse. And the other thing is, Dynamics are just one musical parameter. The recorder is capable of expressing so many other parameters in really detailed ways. We have very detailed articulation, microtonal pitches, different tone colours, vibrato, very fast and agile speeds, long notes. So suggest your dynamics by all means, but don't forget to explore the rest. Ah, uh, handy to mention, the low recorder register is quite soft, so please don't write any fortissimos here. And please don't write really, really high pianissimo, because... <sighs> Which brings me to interpreting specific instrumental techniques. We see a lot of these in strings, double stops, chords, tremolo. How do you play that on the recorder? you need to look at the purpose of this technique. For example, double stops on a violin. This could be to illustrate the harmony, um, which you could interpret with a broken chord. Or is it to give more of a rhythmic accent? You could use articulation. Is it something textural? A tremolo could be interpreted with a soft flutter tongue or a vibrato or even a wide trill. It is your arrangement and you are free to get creative. So it's less about 
reproducing exactly those notes on the page and more of taking the idea of it and giving it a new lease of life from this. <laughs> the last thing is try it out. Be honest about if it's working yet and don't be afraid to keep tweaking. So that was my introduction to arranging music for recorders. Um, if you're working on something, please feel free to share it in the comments so that other people can have a go if that's what you want. As always, you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on my face down here in the corner. Down here is a link to the Team Recorder Patreon where you can choose to support the channel. And up here is a link on how to write your own diminutions since you're so into writing music. Thanks for watching and have a great day.